Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum operations to reduce x to zero. So the problem statement is actually pretty simple. We're given an array of numbers, integers like this and an integer x. We are able to perform a couple operations. We can either remove the leftmost integer or we can remove the rightmost integer and we can repeatedly make this operation. Now, every time we remove one of these integers, we are going to remove that from our value x. So just blowing this example up a little bit, suppose we decide to take our left pointer and remove this guy. And if we do that, we're pretty much shifting the pointer over. Now, when you remove one, we're going to take our total x and subtract from it one. And now we're going to be left with a four. Now, our goal here is to reduce x to zero. And not only that, but we want to do it in the minimum number of steps. So here there are multiple ways to do that. If we remove one and then remove another one and then remove three, we just removed three values. The total of them is five. So five minus five is, of course, going to be zero. Now, another way of doing that is just removing the three and the two. That would give us a total of zero as well, but this time it only took two steps. Now, another way to do it, technically, couldn't we just take one and four and also do it? No, because remember, our pointers are initialized to the left and right. So at first, this problem does seem pretty simple, but it's actually misleading because yes, we can solve it with a two-pointer approach, but it's not the most efficient way to do so. Like, you're your first thought might be, okay, let's just try recursion. Let's just try backtracking. But that's actually definitely not going to be the most efficient because we know usually backtracking becomes exponential. But actually, this problem can easily be solved in n squared time with a brute force approach. And it might not be obvious immediately, but if you're familiar with like prefix and postfix sums, you recognize that we have n prefix sums like this is a prefix this 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 and this and we also have n postfixes this 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 and this so basically we have n prefixes and n postfixes now to brute force this problem, we would try pretty much every combination of prefix and postfix, including like an empty postfix and including an empty prefix. And if we're going to try every combination, n times n is going to be n squared. So that's brute force, actually. If we want to do better than this, how can we do that? It's not easy for sure. I will admit that. But this is the type of thing that actually does come up in some problems. And it's basically reverse thing. They worded the problem in a certain way, and they did that, I assume, on purpose. But actually, there is another way of looking at this problem that is mathematically equivalent. And approaching it in that way will actually lead to a more efficient solution because when you recognize that the mathematically equivalent way of approaching it, then you also recognize that that kind of matches the sliding window algorithm, which usually runs in big O of n times. So let me kind of explain a little bit of the intuition and I'm going to give you a quick warning that this is why math kind of does come up in algorithm type problems. You do need a little bit of algebra knowledge to be able to recognize what I'm about to show you. Think of it this way. We're looking for some like, let's say this and this. And this is not like the most efficient solution as we talked about earlier. But basically, we're looking for some prefix plus some postfix such that these total up to x because remember we're taking these and subtracting them from x let's call this y actually i'm going to call this i'm going to put a variable here for y this is what these are equal to and we're trying to look for a y such that x minus y is equal to zero or equivalently x is equal to y so that's what we're looking for and that's pretty simple so far and we're going to be left over possibly with some elements in the middle and i'm jumping ahead a little bit but how can we like mathematically get a formula for what this middle is going to total up to well let's say the entire sum of the array is let's just call it sum for short that's the entire sum of the entire array so basically this middle portion is going to be the sum minus y, which is that's pretty obvious, right? Like these two total up to y and we know y totals up to x. So we can just say the total sum of the array minus 
X is what the blue stuff is going to be, the middle of the array. Okay, that's simple enough, nothing crazy, this isn't like calculus or anything, but why is this even helpful? Like why would we care? Why is it easier to find the middle than it is to find the prefix and postfix? Well, because like I said, we can enumerate all of the prefixes and postfixes, but that combination is gonna be N squared. Now, there is an algorithm I know about called the sliding window algorithm where we can kind of have some criteria where we increase the window and then sometimes we decrease we shrink the window from the left and sometimes we add elements to the right and sometimes we remove elements. So if we change the criteria such that we're looking for a sliding window that has a total sum equal to some target value, that's a pretty simple algorithm, isn't it? Like that's the textbook sliding window algorithm. We're trying to find some window with some certain sum or a window with a specific total. And another shameless plug, I literally talk about like almost this exact problem in my advanced algorithms course. It's basically called the sliding window variable size because the sliding window could change sizes. And this is just a slight variation where we're looking for where the sum is like greater than some target get value. But my point here is that this is a simple problem to solve. It's very, very simple, actually. When you can kind of take this hard problem and convert it into a more simple one, then it becomes easy. So once you know that, the problem is pretty simple. So I'll quickly dry run through this one. In this case, our target is equal to the total sum of the array, which I think is six plus five, which is 11 minus X, which is five. So our target here is six. So if we find a window with a size of six like this, we have found the solution. But actually, remember what we're trying to return. We're not trying to return the size of the window. We're trying to return the number of elements that we had to remove from the array. So kind of like this. So basically, we would take the entire length of the array. Once we found our window, like let's say this is our window, then we would take the entire length of the array, subtract from it the length of the window, and that would give us three because these are the three elements that we had to remove, two over here and one on this side. So that's kind of the main idea behind this problem. Now let me quickly dry run through it. We have our two pointers. We initialize left and right at the beginning. We keep a current sum total. So we are here, we have one. So initially our sum is one, then we add another one here. Now our sum is two. We're still trying to get up to the target. Now we have a four. So now our sum is six. We found one valid window. We take the size of the entire array, five minus the size of the window, which is three. That gives us two. Remember, we're trying to minimize this. And we pretty much actually already found the solution, but I'll quickly show how the rest of the algorithm would go. Now we're going to add another value to now our sum is going to be eight. That's clearly bigger than the target. So probably we have to start shrinking our window and I'm kind of being lazy about drawing this, but our right pointer would be here at this point. Now we'd start shifting our left pointer. So we'd shift it by one. We'd decrement one. So we take our total of eight minus one. That gives us a seven and that's still bigger than the target. So once again, we're gonna decrement here, and now our total sum is gonna be six, which is again, exactly equal to the target. But since this is our window here, we're gonna take the length of the array, which is five, minus from it the length of the window, two, and that's gonna give us three, three elements that we had to remove. And clearly three is bigger than two, so our result is still gonna be two. And I think that's pretty much as deep as I wanted to go into like this quick dry run because it's just a pretty simple sliding window uh, algorithm. Here, once again, we'd add the three, and now our sum is again gonna be greater than the target. So we would try to remove, so we'd remove the four. Now our sum is less than the target, and there's clearly no more elements to add, so that's kind of the idea idea behind this problem. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that this is a linear time algorithm. No extra space is really needed here. Okay, now let's code this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is compute the target, which we can do, like I said, taking the total sum of the array and subtracting from it x. And we're also going to initialize some variables, what the current sum of our window is going to be. Initially, it's going to be zero. And we're also going to keep track of our results in a slightly different way than I talked about in the drawing explanation. Since we are trying to minimize the number of elements that we're removing from the edges of the array. In other words, we're trying to maximize the length of the window. Initially, we don't have any valid windows, so we can set this to negative one. And at the end, I'm gonna do that computation I talked about where we're gonna return the length of nums subtracting by the max 
window length. But remember, or I actually didn't even talk about this, it's possible that we don't find a valid solution. Maybe there just isn't a solution that we can sum up to zero by removing elements from the edges of the array. We can't like get it to equal the X value. And if that's the case, we return negative one. We will know that if our max window never changes, it stays as an invalid value of negative one. So I'm just gonna use a ternary operator here. We return negative one if max window is equal to negative one. Otherwise, we return the number of elements that we had to remove just like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the sliding window. I'm only going to initialize the left pointer to zero because we're going to have the right pointer shifted every single time just like this using a for loop. Now, every single time we reach a number, we're going to add it to the current sum. So just taking the number at the right pointer and add it. The first thing you're probably going to write is, well, the simple thing is if current sum is equal to target, that's pretty simple. We update our result and our result is kind of being stored with max window. So we would say the max window is now potentially going to be updated and we're trying to obviously maximize it. So we're going to take max of whatever it already is and the size of our current window. How do you get the size of the current window? Well, that's what our pointers are for. Take right minus left plus one because if right and left were equal we wouldn't want like a size of zero we would want a size of one that's where the plus one comes from remember i said that if the current sum ever becomes greater than the target we then want to update the current sum by shifting our left pointer by one and decrementing the value from our current sum and the reason i'm putting this line up above before we increment the pointer is important because we don't want to increment the pointer and then remove the value from current sum we want the original value that was at index left so that's why i put this line first but it's actually possible like i showed in the example we might need to increment this pointer multiple times so instead of having an if statement we actually put a while loop and if we're going to put a while loop it's theoretically possible that our left pointer could actually end up crossing the right pointer so now we're going to have another condition here. If left is less than or equal to right, then we're going to uh, continue this. But if our left pointer ever crossed the right pointer, we wouldn't want to do this. And part of the reason that this is actually possible is because our target could end up being negative. That would happen if X is greater than the sum of all values in the array. That would lead us to going out of bounds if we didn't have this here. Now, the only problem with this is the order of these two. And it's not intuitive. It's not necessarily obvious at first, but think about this. What if we reach the end of the array, like the last iteration of this array, and then we check after adding the rightmost element, are we now equal to the target? No. So then we still do this loop. Maybe we try to shrink our window until we are valid and then we become valid. Like we make a valid window by using this loop. We got to the point where our current sum is equal to the target. Well, on the last iteration of the loop, we don't have this if statement coming after this while loop, so we would miss that valid window. We could technically copy and paste this code and put it out here, but it's better to just swap the order of these two. That will allow us to catch all of the cases. So this is the entire valid code. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.